Stitch Cutie. I'm Brittany with Stitches of Love Quilting and I'm so excited because we're going to make three blocks together today. We are going to make our fun block 18, which is this little Uncle Sam gnome. We're going to make block 17, which is the one with the stars. And then we're also making block 14, which is the fun little um, dragonfly tree. So cute. Okay, so let's talk about what we need to get started. So here's my setup. I have my light pad, my applique glass with my cutting mat, my steady Betty. And then of course I have my favorite scissors, which are my Karen K Buckley's. I have my favorite tape that I use to hold my fabric in place, rotary cutter for the end. And you know, I can't do a video without my steam fast travel iron. So handy for ironing your applique pieces on. So what I've done is I've taken my prefuse laser cut applique pieces. I peeled the backing off all of them. And I've kind of separated it between blocks. So I have like this whole little pile is for my gnome. Here's one pile of a tree, another pile of a tree. And we have our fabric, which we're gonna cut in a second. And last but not least, let's talk about the fun colors we're gonna use on these three blocks. These are sulky 40 weight rayon threads, which work great on your embroidery machine. So we have white 1001. I'm just gonna start piling them over here for myself. Then we have the teal 1045. We have brown for the tree trunks, 1130. We have green, this is my favorite green, 1177. It's called avocado. Christmas red, or maybe it should be called 4th of July red for this month, 1147. Then we have the beautiful blue, 1293. We have black, 1005. We have the silver gray, of course, for our gnome's beard. It's 1218, and then last but not least, we have peach, which is 1019. So let's get started by cutting our fabric into the proper sizes. So just take a look at your pattern to remind yourself what you're cutting. We're gonna cut one at 10 by 14 and two at six by 14. So what I'm gonna do is iron my fabric. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And you can tell that it's already cut to 14 width. So all you're gonna need to do is cut a 10, a six, and a six. And so you have the salvage, just make sure you cut that off. We just started leaving that because why cut it off? You get a little extra if we don't cut it. So if you wanna press, and if you've been pressing the whole time with starch, make sure you do that. I'm gonna fold my guy in half to cut just because of the size cutting mat I'm using. So I'm gonna fold this, give it a press, and we'll be back in just a second to trim this into the right size together, okay? Okay, now that I'm pressed, I am going to simply move my Steady Betty out. And now what I've revealed is my cutting mat. And so very simply, I'm gonna line it up. I have it folded in half. So right now it's seven inches in width, right? Which equals 14 when it's unfolded. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna do a 10 inch cut. So I'm just gonna line up here. This is gonna be trimmed down as you know at the end. So it doesn't need to be like perfectly square or anything. You just wanna make sure you have about that size. Cause again, we're gonna make it exact at the end of the project. We're using the oversized method where we cut it down. So I'm gonna set this piece aside. And now from this, I need two six inch pieces. So just line it up. And we're just gonna cut on the 12, which gets rid of our selvage. And then we're gonna cut on the six. So we have two six by 14s. And throw your selvage away, or if you wanna save your selvage, you can use it towards a, it's those fun quilts, you know, where you make the um, like selvage bags and things like that, that's always fun. So get my ruler out of the way. What we're gonna do now is load a white thread on our machine. We're gonna load the file for block 14, which is our dragonfly tree. And we're gonna start with the first step, which will put a T in the middle of our hoop. Okay, so now you have your T stitched and what you're gonna do, as always, you'll know from the previous videos, I turn my hoop so that it's nestled safely on top of my Steady Betty with my six by 14, piece of fabric, I folded it right sides together like this. And then I'm gonna go one more time in half. If you wanna give it a little press, just so you know it's nice and tidy, you can. And then, so you have your folded edges, you're gonna line it up with the corner of your T. And just like so, you'll open it up this way. And then one more time open. And then you can give it a little press to get rid of that fold if you want. I just like to do it in the center. And then we're gonna use the handy dandy tape, hold this in place, 
And again, with that white thread, we're gonna move on to the next step, which is gonna be the outline of the tree trunk and our tree. Okay, so now on your hoop, you have your tree and your tree trunk. Again, I'm gonna put it on top of my study buddy. And what we're gonna iron down first is the tree trunk. And you put it right in place and we'll give it a press. Now we'll get our tree. And remember with the big piece, just make sure you have it lined up on all the little tree branches, all the way from start to finish, and then just pick one side and move up the tree. So I'm gonna just work my way up. And this way you make sure that it doesn't wiggle as you iron up. Cute! So now what you'll do is put this back on still with the white thread, and your machine is gonna give you the outline of your three little dragonfly bodies. So take a look at your three little outlines. Let's iron these on. These are the cutest little Swiss dots. The fabric, cute, cute, cute. And all three are exactly the same. Makes life easy. I love when the shapes are the same. There we go. And then this little guy right here. So I have all three in position. I'm just gonna tap each one into place and as always, if you realize that you iron it a little wonky, while it's still hot, you can kind of adjust it into position. So now we're gonna put this back on and we're gonna come back to iron on the dragonfly wings. Okay, so you have the outlines of your three wings and you'll notice, you're like, hey Brittany, there's only three dragonflies, but I have six pieces. That's because we're double lining the white and all six pieces are exactly the same. So let me show you the steps we're gonna take. You are just going to line this little guy up. Now I'll tell you, they're not symmetrical. One side is a little bit, I guess, skinnier than the other side. So we're just gonna line one up, give it a press, and then we're just gonna put a second one directly on top. And what that does is give us a double lined applique piece, right? Isn't that so easy? And that way you don't see through the white fabric. So we're just gonna do that on the remaining two dragonflies. So I'm gonna lay down both, the first layer on both of those, give it a press. Ooh, that little guy, there we go. Now, same thing, put that double piece right on top. There we go, and we'll press that. Now we're gonna use the white for one more step, the white thread, and that is going to do the cutest little buttonhole stitch on our dragonfly wings. So this is what your hoop should look like right now. Okay, so let's take a look. Is that not the cutest little stitching on that? So I made them one and a half for the bite in. It's just the perfect little length. It makes me happy and I hope it makes you happy too. So now we're gonna do a thread color change and I'll tell you for the rest of the steps on this particular block, you don't need to take your hoop on and off. I'm doing it only so I can talk to you about the thread color changes. So what we're gonna put on now is the 1045, and the sewing machine is gonna go around the teal or aqua color section and give the little antennas for each of your three dragonflies. Okay, let's take a look at our dragonflies. Aren't they the cutest? Look at that, they're a little antenna stitched for us. So now we're gonna do a color change to the brown, which is 1130, and the machine is gonna do your nice buttonhole stitch around your tree trunk. Okay, so now your tree trunk is stitched, so we have one final color change to complete this block, and that is to put on the 1177, and of course the machine will do a really nice buttonhole stitch around the outer section of your tree. Okay, so your block 14 is all done. Let's take a look close up. Doesn't that look so good? I love it. Okay, so you know the drill. We're gonna take this out of the hoop. We'll trim it at the end. What we're gonna do now is re-hoop and we're going to load the file for block 17, which is our star tree. And we're gonna load a white thread on our machine, just like we did with this, where we have the T in the center. That'll be the first step. So let's get going. Okay, so now for block 17, you have a T in the center of your hoop, just like you did for the last tree. And same thing, I folded my fabric in half right sides together, and then in, so in half, and then in half one more time, line the folded edges up, and just open it up here and open it up right here. Give it a little press in the center. There we go. 
And now we'll tape it into place and we're gonna have the white thread on for the first two steps. And the machine is going to give us an outline for our tree trunk and our tree. So let's put this back on and start the stitching. Okay, so now we have the outline for our two pieces. And again, I always like to use my steady buddy to keep my the contents of my frame nice and secure. So I can easily put it right on top of that steady bitty and iron everything in place. Makes me happy. All right, so we have our tree trunk and now we're gonna put our tree in place. And just like the other tree, make sure you have it perfectly lined up. And then we'll start ironing from one end to the other. So just give a little press. There we go. All right, so now what the machine is gonna do with this next step, we have white for one more step. The machine is gonna give us an outline of all six stars that go down our tree. Okay, so now you have the outline of all your trees and my thread broke right here and I re-threaded so I just need to trim my thread. There we go. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put my blue stars in place first. So my blue goes right here, right here, and right here. So just use the picture on the front of your um, project to know where to put this. And you can also use the extra picture that we included this month in your pattern just to guide the color orientation, right? And now one more star down here. They're all the same star, they're just kind of flipped different directions. So let's press those three blue ones in place. Then of course the three red stars are gonna go where <laughs> the blues aren't. That's easy enough, right? So let's get our red right in place. So cute. Do -do -do. This is our patriotic tree for our Uncle Sam. So cute. And I love how the gnomes are like dressed up every month. Isn't that fun? As we get towards the end of the year, it's really fun. They get a little more dressed up, right? Like we have Uncle Sam. Then we have what? We have a witch coming up. And then we have Santa, I believe. Isn't there a Santa one? Where he's got a little candy cane he's holding. You would think I look at the quilt so much, I would remember exactly what each block is. But you know what? Sometimes I forget what it looks like. Okay, so now we're ready for color changes. So for the future steps for this particular block, you don't need to take your hoop on and off. I'm going to again simply just so I can talk about the thread color changes. So what we're gonna load now is this beautiful 1293 thread and the machine is going to do all three of our blue stars. Okay, you wanna see your stars stitched? Don't those look cute? Well, I should say just the blue stars are stitched because now we're going to put on the 1147 red and the machine is going to do the remaining three red stars. Okay, so now your red stars are stitched. It's time to stitch your tree pieces. So we're going to load the brown 1130 and your machine will stitch your tree trunk. Okay, so now your tree trunk is stitched and it's time for the final thread color change of block 17. And that is to put on the 1177 avocado green and the machine will stitch a lovely buttonhole stitch around the outer branches of your tree. Okay, so let's take a look at block 17 completely stitched. I have to tell you, it is just so stinking cute, isn't it? I love it. So now what we're gonna do is take this out of the hoop. We're gonna re-hoop with our tearaway stabilizer and we are going to now load the file for block 18, which is our Uncle Sam gnome. We'll load our white thread into the machine and get started on that first step, which is the T in the middle of our hoop. Okay, so in the center of your hoop, you have a T. It's much larger than the T that we use with the trees. So turn and put this onto my steady Betty. What I've done with my large 10 by 14, I folded it in half right sides together and folded it one more time as a fold. What we're gonna do, just like with the tree and with the past months, line it up at our T, unfold it, and then do one more unfold and tape it into place. Then what we'll do is load this on our machine with a white thread, and the machine is gonna give us a bunch of applique outlines for this first step. So let's tape this into place, give it a little press if you wanna iron out that T, and let's get started. Okay, so on your machine, you can see, I know it's probably hard to see on the camera, we have a bunch of applique outlines. So let's get started putting them in place. And I do wanna point out that there's some areas of overlap and underlap. So we wanna put them on in a specific order. 
So I'm just gonna start with the legs. And so you just put your legs in place right here. And you know what? I'm gonna go in and lay my feet down too and we'll press them all at once. Is that not the cutest little striped fabric, by the way? So patriotic. And then put a shoe and then the right shoe. And we'll give this a press. There we go. And look, my little piece wiggled, but that's okay. While it's still hot, just kind of maneuver it into place. See how I kind of, it moved while I was putting my little shoes in place. So now let's do the left arm. What you want to make sure that you do is you put your basket first. So let's iron this little guy into position. Then we're going to take the left hand and iron this piece down. Basically, you're always going to iron down from smallest number to largest number. And then let's do our left arm. So cute. Oh, I got a piece of fuzz. There we go. All right. And now let's move over to the right arm. We're going to do the hand first. Get that right in position. There we go. Don't you love this little iron? Keeps you from burning your fingers. And it fits in the hoop so nicely. I don't know what we would do without this iron. Whatever would we do? I'm sure we'd find a way to survive, but it sure does make it easier. All right. So now all of the areas of overlap and underlap are done. So you don't, you can do the next two pieces any order you want. We're just going to go on and go with the hat. And this is a really fun stripe. It gives the illusion that you've pieced it, right? But you didn't have to. Or that you've appliqued the stripes on it. And then another really fun stripe, and that is the base of our heart. All right, so now we're gonna keep that white thread on for another step. And when we put this on, the machine is now gonna give us like the little piece that goes on our heart right up here. It's going to give us the base, um, the little accent on the hat, the big old belly of our gnome, and the little socks popping out right here. Okay, so now that those are outlined, let's start ironing into place. There are no over and under laps on this step, so that's nice and easy. I'm just gonna start at the top with my heart. And this is a little perfect fit right here. How cute is that? Now remember, um, there's buttons that are gonna go here. That's not gonna be stitched on until the very end after your quilt is quilted and that comes in your finishing kit. So don't worry that you don't have buttons in your kit. I promise you're gonna have them at the end of the project when you need them. So what we'll do now is put our two little red socks in place. There we go. And let's put this little guy in place right there. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, I think he goes this way. They are not symmetrical, so you do want to make sure you have them facing the right way. Yep, that's a perfect fit. There we go. Just wiggle him down. Now let's put his big belly in place. Is this not the cutest check? I love the check bellies because the checks are cut on a 45 degree angle for you so that you get the nice boop. Come on, little belly. There we go. So now that this is ironed in place, we will, the next step will be to put the little navy dots in place right here. So cute. There we go. I love it. Okay, so now let's put this back on. The machine is now going to give us an outline of our beard. So now you can see we have our beard outlined. We're going to put this right in place. Super cute. Now, still with the white thread, we'll put this back on for the final two pieces, which are the little nose piece and then the little um, red hat accent. So now let's iron those final two pieces in place. We're gonna put our nose down first. So the nose does go underneath the hat. So get that right in place. And now the red across the hat. 
Then the very first color change is ready to take place on this block. And that is to put on the red, or I'm sorry, yeah, the red. We're gonna put on the Christmas red 1147. So take a look. We have our little Nomi. So let's load the red and the machine is going to go around our hat, around part of our little heart and do the little um, balloon um, string down. It's gonna do both legs and socks, the arms, and then this little um, brim of the hat. So have fun watching your machine stitch for ya. Okay, look at this cute little gnome, he's so fun. And I love the little balloon, do y'all see that? So cute. So now it's time to load black, which is 1005, and the machine is going to stitch both little shoes for you. Okay, so now your black is stitched and it's time to change to 1218, and the machine is going to stitch the buttonhole stitch on your little pail over here, and it's going to go around your beard. Okay, how cute is that little pail? That makes me really happy. It's like a little pail of sparklers or a bucket of sparklers. So now you're gonna load your peach, which is 1019, and the machine is going to stitch your gnome nose and the two hands. Okay, so one more color change to the 1293, which is gonna go around the blue pieces, and then our little gnome will have come to life and it'll be time to trim. Yay! Now your Nomi is all stitched. Is that not the cutest? And remember, you have your two trees all done. So now what you'll do is get your pattern out. You'll use your placement guide like we've done in all the past months. And you can use that to help you guide trimming your pieces down to size. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial for your Gnome Quilt Block of the Month, Box 7. And I'll see you next month for Box 8. Happy stitching.